everyone, welcome to Island Hooking. Um, today I want to do a review on some of the reels that I have. Um, I know a lot of some people is asking me about how the the pen and the Daiwa, uh, how good the quality they are. So um, what I did is that when um, the pen, the pen um, Fierce came out, I, I bought it. And when the pen Battle 2 came out, I purchased it and I also bought the Daiwa BG5000 when they first came out and um, I wanted to test them out because I know there's a lot of expensive reels out there you can buy but I wanted to um, try out the cheaper versions because um, I understand that not everybody have money to burn and people wanted to know if the cheaper versions are just as good and you know there are good quality reels out there for cheaper and these are some of them that um, um, I want to try out to see if it works. Right now I got the Pen Fierce um, Fierce uh, 4000 over here. Then I got the Pen Battle 2 5000. And then I purchased the Daiwa BG 5000 when they all first came out. And I want to see for myself as well. I mean you can buy, um, like I said, more expensive reels. But I just want to see if um, the cheaper quality version would be just as good um, because again, again you know not everybody have money that they can go spend on expensive reels so you know this might be the next best option so let's start with the um, the, the pen fierce first um, so far um, it still works I mean again don't you know there are cheaper versions don't expect it to be super smooth and you know it, it'll it'll have its little noises here and there and you know it'll be you know it's not again um, an, uh, something that you expect out of an um, expensive reel again this is a cheaper version but it still um, works well I mean the drag still works fantastic the bell works great it cranks really good and smooth um, no problems right now but when I first got it um, it was good for the first month or two then I noticed there was a grinding sound within um, and then it started to make some sort of funny noises so I had to open it up to see what was wrong and it's funny how and I don't know if it's a Manufacturer, I guess, must be some sort of manufacturer um, flaw. I don't know if it's a flaw, she says a flaw, but I've noticed that the pens, for some reason, the gearing, the main gearing, the top one, it's always corroded most of the time. Uh, and I don't know why is that, but I've noticed that um, happened with this one and also happened with this one. I noticed that main gearing on the top, for some reason, I, I don't know, I don't know if it's just a the the um the um the cut the um the draw of the straw that you just have to pick the the one that has the corroded gear in it but I don't know I just been noticing pen has a lot of that inside of it I don't know if they check it I don't know if it it's first when they put it in it's nice and after a while they you know you know they leave it in there it gets corroded and what but I noticed that the thing is all corroded I had to um file it down with a file smooth it out. And then um, also I noticed that on the plastic housing, there was like a piece of plastic that was, um, I guess when it, they took it out of the mold, they didn't shave it down correctly. So I had to shave that down. And then I, I don't know if because it's mass production or what it is, but um, you know, they're pumping these out real fast. But I noticed I had to shave the gearing as well as the housing down. And once I did that, I re-greased it. It works fine now. There's no vibration, there's no grinding sound, and to today, it's perfect. So, um, and you know, if anything, you know, good about the pen, pen is that um, you can buy the parts online. You know, anything, anything breaks, you can just go online and replace the parts. That's one thing great about it. Um, uh, you know, uh, you can get it, you can get anything that, you know, that you want to get, and you can just replace it. So I, I, that's one thing I like about um, um, the pens. Yeah, if you ever need something, you can just get the part for it. So it's no problem. Um, of course, you can always hand it in, but I 
tend to just do it myself because I don't want to wait for another reel to come in, right? I kind of want to take care of it now. Unless it's, unless it's something I, you know, totally can't fix, then perhaps I would. But when I took it apart, you know, I knew what was wrong with it. So I just fixed it and now it works fine. Um, so, so far, you know, that's the only thing, you know, when you're buying the pen, um, once in a great while, you might get one that's defective. Um, and something you may have to open it up and um, see what's wrong. But again, I noticed the pen has that problem with the top gearing that it has, I don't know, it's corroded. You can notice it's, it's real rough and I had to file it down. And then of course the plastic housing again, there's a little piece that they forgot to cut off, which I had to cut off and shave down. And once that was done, then the reel was good. So anytime you guys um, do buy a reel, I suggest you test it out first, right? You know, crank it and test the bell, make sure the bell works and the drag is good. But again, sometimes you won't you won't see any you won't feel anything until after you start putting um, pressure on the reel and start fighting a fish, and then you maybe from time you start to know that there is some sort of gearing problem. And sometimes you gotta put it to the test to find out. Unfortunately, yeah, um, which I had, which which like I said, after a month of using it and fighting fish, I noticed the gearing sound. So. Um, luckily, you know, I was able to fix it. But other than that, after that, it worked fine. And if you're one of the few that got a good one, then, you know, again, what do you expect for a cheaper version, right? I mean, don't expect perfection. But though, for the price and for its work, it's a very good reel. I mean, if you're just starting out fishing, I suggest the pen. The pen is good. I mean, it, it's so far been working. I caught, you know, I caught lots and lots of papilla with this, and it's still going, you know. And that's why I still keep using it. I'm using it in my kayak. I'm using it on shoreline. So yeah, I like it. I mean, it's good so far. So highly recommend. Um, if you want something cheap, um, something that's still durable. Again, don't expect perfection. But if, if money is an issue, the the pen fierce is a good option. And, and and I also got the pen. Um, my, my my friends bought the pen on Passion, so um, we'll test that out later to see how well the pen Passion is. But for now, the the fierce is pretty good. So now let's go down to the um, pen battle two. Again, you know, for for a cheap reel, the quality is really good. Um, only problem, like I said, was the gearing. That top gearing, I don't know why it's. Again, you know, after like, after like about a year, I noticed the thing started getting this weird sound. And then when I, I crank it, it had this, um, I could hear this grinding sound inside. And that sound is just, if you heard that sound, it's just this hitting, yeah, the, the, the mono, so don't, it's not the sound. But it was really, really loud. Um, but I took it apart. And again, I, I realized that the top gearing um, was corroded so I had to file that thing down and then I re-greased it and after that no more grind grinding sounds um, no more vibrations and to today it works fantastic uh, keep in mind that again it's not waterproof I mean if you're taking them on the kayak which you can if you flip over or whatever you're gonna have to open it up because sand and water will go in. Because the last time I flipped over, lots of sand, lots of water. So, um, but again, you know, it's not made for ocean anyhow, right? right? It's made for shoreline. But just in case, if you do get splashed on, keep in mind. And um, also, uh, the this reel needs to be maintained more. Um, because if not, I don't know, the, the grease, even though I'm putting the, the pen grease in here and it's great, I suggest um, cleaning this out every once a year or even earlier. It depends how much you use it or if it goes underwater, if you get splashed down because again, the gearing will start to use, you will start to hear the, the grinding sound. I mean, if you hear a loud sound, that means you need to regrease it because um, for some reason, the again, the, the water gets in a little bit easier than the, um, than the Daiwa BG, but again, this is a shoreline reel, so something to keep in mind, yeah. Um, but other than that, it's a good reel. I like it. Still using it. Highly recommend it. It's a real high good retrieve reel. Drag is 
drag is good it cranks fantastic and you know again i love it so i suggest if you guys want uh to use the pen battle too i highly recommend but just keep in mind that um you know that gearing yeah it's a little sometimes you may just have to if you don't want to file it down just take it off replace it you know just go online get that part will come in within a week or so come in slip it in there and you're good to go and then you know that's it so then i bought the bg 5000 when they first came out and loving it so far i uh, had no problems with it yet uh, my friend did though well okay so yes so anytime you buy a bg 5000 4000 no matter what bg it is this is what i highly recommend take it apart because the grease that they put in this reel i hate to say it it sucks um it hardens for some reason and when it hardens it'll cause all kind of problems within it my friend's one it got hard it bent the shaft in there so i had to re-straighten the shaft and after that after re um straightening out the shaft and re-greasing it his reel ran perfectly even to today but it's that grease that caused the problem it comes like concrete in there for some reason it's really hard um so Anytime you buy a BG, I suggest you take it apart already and start clean. Take out all that old grease and put the new grease in here. And then once you've done that, you should have no problems. Gearing was nice. Didn't have no corrosion, nothing. And it is, it is water sealed. So if you go underneath the water, it seals better. I mean, uh, dunked it two, two times in the ocean already when I was on my kayak. And when I opened it up. There was no water, there was no sand inside of the um, the reel, so that shows that it's, it's, it's sealed, it's, it is sealed properly. So I like that. So if you guys are using it for land or on, on the kayak, I highly recommend. Just be looking for something that's you know, a cheaper cheaper quality reel, I suggest the BG 5000. I haven't tried the 4000 or the, the, you know, the, the other sizes, I don't know if they have problems with those, but so far, only the 5000 I have used, and so far I have no hiccups yet. Um, only hiccup was just the grease. Change the grease out and you should be solid. Um, so, and again, you can buy the parts online if you ever need parts, extra, extra spools or whatever. Um, and you know, if you do have um, scratches on the reel, one good tip, permanent marker. You know, a lot of times the reels are black. And one, one thing I don't like about the, the this pen battle is that the bell is black. So, you know, if the bell get nicked up, you'll see the chrome. But in order to fix that, I just use the permanent black marker. I just cover it all up with the black marker. Even the housing, when it's all scratched up, I use the black marker on it and it works really good. It hides all those um, imperfections. So something to think about, you know, so good way to, to make your reel look nice. Just by using a permanent marker. Also, um, if you guys grease your guys reels, um, if you're only gonna grease it once in a great while, I know some people will probably do that, I highly recommend buying good quality grease and you know you can buy the the good um um you know the good oils and whatever you need for the reels but if you're gonna do it every six months or once a year you don't have to buy i mean wd-40 will work fine you can use the pen grease which i use and the oil and that that, that should be enough um sometimes you may have to use brake fluid the i mean the brake cleaner the can if there's all sand inside i mean if there's sand in here guys right away you take everything apart and you soak it with uh, either with WD-40 or you shoot it down with brake cleaning fluid or something. You get every grease, every sand out because one grain of sand will cause problems in your gearing. So I suggest you guys shoot it out, clean it out. But the thing good about WD-40 too is that when you shoot the WD-40, the grease will start to peel off, yeah? And, and you can scrape it off. I use toothpicks. I mean, I use a little bit flat screwdriver to dig out the grease first and then shoot it down and, and get all that out and then WD-40 everything and then I start putting everything back together with the with the pen grease inside. Um, that So again, you know, and you can buy all those expensive grease or like I said, oils, uh, it's up to you, you know, depending on, on your budget, yeah. 
Or if you're only going to do it once in a while, I would suggest do high quality. But if you're doing it every six months, every year, you don't have to go expensive. Because you'll be always changing the grease out and re-oiling the, the reels like that, yeah. But again, of course, if you hear something weird, feel weird vibration, it's best to take it apart, yeah, and see what's wrong. Maybe some sand came inside or um, water got in or something. But um, other than that, so far so good. Um, for cheap quality reels, the the pen and the the Daiwa BG works fine. Um, and again, it's been working. I had no major malfunctions yet. Um, again, though, buy the reels specifically for what you're trying to catch. Though, understand that if you're using a smaller reel and trying to catch big fish, now it's not saying that it's not possible. You can. It's just that you'll be probably, probably putting more pressure on the smaller reel. Especially if your pole is smaller, the the, the reel will take more of the um, the, um, the punishment, yeah, compared to... Because usually when you get a you know, bigger pole, to match the bigger pole, the pole can do a lot of the fighting and puts less pressure on the reel. But if the pole is smaller, then expect the reel to take a little bit more um, um, banging and more of the, um, the, the pressure. So you might want to buy a bigger or more higher quality reel. So if you're going with a smaller pole, I'd suggest getting a more higher quality reel if you're going for big fish, okay? So keep that in mind. If you're using small poles, you're going for big fish, I suggest maybe you might not want to use these little cheaper version, cheaper cheaper reels. You might want to buy a more expensive reel that can handle that type of fish. Or you're going to have to really baby it. And But then again, you know, again, not impossible. Just expect that maybe you might have a malfunction or you may have to, you know, just service your reel more often and really take a look at the gearing. Or it might break that much faster because, again, you're putting more pressure on the reel. So it, de so it really depends on um, what you're trying to do. So don't, ex you know, um, and that's how you can break your reels, yeah? Um, because you're using the wrong size pole or you're going for too big a fish with a smaller reel. Unless, like I say, you buy the more expensive reel that can handle that, then you'll be fine. Yeah, you can use a smaller pole. Just get, make sure you get a good high quality reel. You may have to spend some money, but you know what? It's worth it. You have less hiccups, less headaches, and you have a better chance of bringing that fish in. So, but you don't see me using this trying to go for an Ulua, right? On GT. Uh, they'll, they'll, they'll strip this reel for one thing and probably break this reel in pieces. So, um, you know, I'm just using this for Papillo, smaller game. You know, if I go for anything bigger, then I'm I'm using the Pen Battle 2. Or for big for the GTs, I'm running the BG 5000. Okay, so I'm going I'm gauging it towards what size fish I'm using. Uh, yeah, and keep in mind if you're using a smaller pole, you might want to get a higher quality reel because the reel again will take will have to do a lot of the fighting and not the pole, right? Because you know the pole is smaller. But if you have a bigger pole, then not too bad. The pole can do some of most of the fighting and the reel won't take most of the heat, yeah? But again, if you're going for big fish like GT, you might want to get something that can handle. And then so far, the BG 5000, no problem yet. You know, I don't know. As time goes by, you just never know. But so far, I had no hiccups with the 5000, you know, so I'm kind of happy with that. Uh, except for, like I said, the grease problem, yeah? Take out that old grease or else once that that shaft in their bends, it's gonna be a hard time cranking. So you're gonna to have to re-straighten that pin out and then re-slip it in there. Then it'll run smoothly. But other than that, the Daiwa BG has been fantastic. So, um, I like it. You know, yes, I had to do some modifications. Um, had to service it qu quite a few times and you know, um, keep um, like anything else, right? You you cannot you gotta take care. If you don't take care, you abuse it. Of course, it's gonna break, but it works. So if you're looking for a good quality reel, that's you know, that's on the more affordable side, these reel will do. That's why I use it. You know, I mean you know, that's why I, I I love these reels. It doesn't break the bank, but it does the job, and you can catch fish with them. So, um, I hope this helps you guys out. Um, hope this hope I hope I make sense a little what it, what I'm sharing with you guys and um, and you guys decide if it's worth it or not. Yeah, but thanks for watching. And you be, uh, please subscribe and press like if you guys like my videos. 
and I gotta be going fishing now so I'll catch you guys later and again once again thank you for watching Island Hooking I'll see you guys later Thank you.